The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family. Here is Ozzie, who plays the part of Ozzie Nelson. And, of course, his lovely wife, Harriet, as Harriet Nelson. The older of the Nelson boys, David, appears as David Nelson. And his younger brother, the irrepressible Ricky, played by Ricky Nelson. The Nelson's next-door neighbor, Thorny, is played by Don DeFore. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, boy, how much does that give us all together? Exactly four dollars and ten cents. Don't forget, half of it's mine. Who said it wasn't? What does my share come to? What's the matter? Can't you divide? Well, sure. Okay, what's half of four dollars and ten cents? See, half of ten is five. Oh, boy, four dollars and five cents. <laughs> I just didn't answer my question. What do you mean? Your share is two dollars and five cents. Details, always details. I think that's pretty good. Same here. Takes a lot of willpower to save money, you know. Now that we got all this money, what are we going to do with it? We'll save some more, naturally. Not me. I'm going to spend mine, boy. <laughs> I just got through saying it takes a lot of willpower to save money. Yeah, that's what you said. Well, evidently, you haven't got any. So what? Whatever it takes to spend money, I got a lot of that, boy. <laughs> we don't want to spend it. We want to save some more. What good is money if you don't spend it? You save it for a rainy day. I've already got a raincoat. I want a periscope. <laughs> what? A periscope. They sell them down at the drugstore. What do you want a periscope for? They're neat, boy. You can see around corners with them. What's so wonderful about that? Well, I can tell if Mom's in the kitchen when I want to get some extra cookies. What's this about getting some extra cookies? You weren't supposed to hear that, Mom. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll whistle next time before I come in. Ricky wants to buy a periscope. Oh, you mean one of those little ones I saw advertised in the paper? They're not so little, Mom. Iggy Schwartz has one, and it works well. Is this a slight hint for an advance in your allowance? Oh, no, I got a lot of money saved up. Yeah, now he wants to spend it all. How much did he say? Two dollars and five cents. Oh. Well, that's quite a bit for a periscope. You won't have any money left in at all, you know. Yes, I know. Personally, I'd rather carry it around my wallet for a few days. Not me. I'd rather spend it. Then I wouldn't have to worry about a wallet. <laughs> well, of course, it's your money, but it does seem like an awful lot to waste on a toy. Well, it isn't exactly a toy, Mom. There's a picture of it in the paper. Yes, dear, I see it. Hey, it's a waste of money. Oh, they're having quite a sale at the Emporium. Here's that fishing reel your father's always talking about. And did they cut the price on it? They sure did. I hope he gets it, boy. What do you care? Oh, heck, I don't want to be the only big spender in the family. <laughs> I'll get lonesome. <laughs> Goodness sakes. Look at the sale they're having. All these beautiful dresses at half price. You know, I think I may take a run down to the Emporium a little later. The sale looks too good to miss. Mom? Yes, dear? You think I could have an advance of my allowance? What's the matter? Can't you last until payday? Oh, sure, I can. But I'm just worried about the money. <laughs> I was under the impression that March 15th was passed. Well, yes, of course it is. What are you doing with all those papers? Did you make a mistake or something? Uh, well, if I did, we won't know about it till the government agents come pounding at the door. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry about it. I won't let them in. Well, anyway, it's too late to moan about last year's taxes. I'm just trying to see if I can't do something about this year's, you know, make things a little easier. Oh? Well, what's your verdict? Well, I figure we'll just about make it if we follow my plan. What's your plan? Uh, that we don't eat for the next 12 months. <laughs> well, that's why it would be a little bit difficult. Have you got any other recommendations, Professor? Uh, well, yes, I do think we should cut our spending down to the absolute necessities for the next few months. Well, what do you mean? Well, it's just that we are a little tight here, and I don't think we should make any purchases that we don't absolutely need. Well, suppose there's a special sale with some wonderful buys. Oh, Harriet, there's always a wonderful sale of one sort or another. I'm sure we can forego those things for a while, can't we? Well, it isn't that the situation is desperate, 
It was just I like to have a little margin in case of an emergency of some sort. I expect you're right. Oh, is that this morning's paper? Yes, it is. Oh, did you see that article about the March 15th hangover? No, I didn't. <laughs> Pretty good. Oh, here it is. This reporter calls himself Diogenes. Oh, he's the fellow who was looking for an honest man, wasn't he? Yeah, well, this guy says he's looking for a taxpayer who can honestly say that he paid his taxes and has faced the situation with a smile. Sounds like he's looking for a dishonest man. Yeah, I hope he has plenty of kerosene in the lantern. Looks like a long search, if you ask me. Oh, say, look at the time. Did you have something special to do? Uh, yeah, I thought I'd go over and see Andy Beasley. Andy Beasley? Do you remember he's the lodge brother who broke his leg in that skiing accident a few weeks ago? I told you about it. Oh, yes. Well, how's he doing? Oh, as well as can be expected, I guess. I thought I'd take a little run over there and kind of cheer him up a bit. Hi, Hi Mom. Mom. Hi, huh? Oh, hello, boys. You saved up some money. Yeah, over $2. Oh, well, good for you. I hate to rush you off, boys, but I'm a little bit late for an appointment. I'll see you later. So long, Pop. Goodbye, dear. How come Pop's in such a hurry? I bet he's going out on the Emporium to buy that fishing reel. No, I'm afraid you're wrong there. In fact, your father and I just had a little talk about money matters. You mean he isn't going to buy the fishing reel? No, I'm afraid not. Aren't you going to buy anything? Well, not for the present at any rate. We've decided to limit ourselves to the necessities until the family bankroll gets in a little better shape. See, Ricky, I told you. Golly. What's the matter, dear? Well, heck, I'm the lonesomest guy in town. <laughs> I wondered who that was. Come on in, sit down. I just thought I'd come over and see how you're getting along. Oh, fine, just fine. What do you got there? Oh, I just brought a little something for you. Oh, well, that was mighty thoughtful, Oz. Oh, a basket of fruit. Yeah, I thought you might like an apple or a banana to munch on while you're lying here. Oh, well, swell, Oz. Just put it over there on the table. Okay. Well, there's not need much room here. Oh, well, just move that one with the bananas over the left, huh? And shift that one a little. That's it. There we are. Now, sit down and take a load off your mind, huh? Okay, fine. <laughs> Gee, we were terribly shocked to hear about your accident. Well, it's just one of those things, Oz. Yeah, Harry was saying just the other day, it must be tough on a guy who's as active as you are to be incapacitated like this. Well, it was my own fault. It was just plain carelessness. Uh, you were skiing, weren't you? Well, uh, not exactly. Uh, we had gone up to the lake to do a little skiing, but it was such a beautiful day that I decided to string up the hammock and take a little snooze. Before I knew what was happening, I'd fallen out of the darn thing, and there I was lying in the snow with a broken leg. How about that? I'd just gotten it strung up, too. Darn thing threw me like a bucking bronco. Oh, isn't that amazing? It sure was a tough break. You know, Oz, at first I thought it was, too. But I'd begun to realize it was really a blessing in disguise. Oh, well, that's a good attitude. Mm, it's more than that, Oz. Lying here with a lot of time to think things over has given me a whole new sense of values. Makes you realize how foolish it is to knock yourself out worrying about a lot of things that never happen. Yeah, I, I suppose you're right. Yeah, in the last two weeks, I've read a few books that I've always wanted to read, listened to the radio, looked at television... Sometimes I've just sat by the hour and looked out the window. But best of all, it's given me a chance to really think things out. And I've come to one definite conclusion. From now on, I'm going to enjoy life. Well, Andy, that's a great philosophy if you can afford it. Oh, I don't mean you have to be silly about things, Oz, but doggone it all, most of us are just too darn conservative. We deny ourselves little pleasures that mean the difference between happiness and drudgery. Well, ordinarily, I'd go along with you, Andy, but I'm still smarting from that income tax deadline. Well, we're all in the same boat on that. You know the old saying, it's later than you think. Relax. Get out and take that little trip you've always wanted to take and forget all about it. Well, I can't afford to take a trip even if I wanted to. Well, of course you can afford it. It's an investment in your own happiness. Loosen up a little, Oz. Give yourself a break. Well, I haven't been thinking about taking any trips, but there is a little something I'd like to buy if I had the courage. Yeah, what's that? Uh, well, I've kind of had my eye on a rather expensive fishing reel down at the Emporium, and I see by this morning's paper they've got a sale there, and they're selling this reel for just about half price. Well, then what are you waiting for? You're going to go through life fishing with a broken-down reel just because you're afraid to spend a little money? 
If you don't get it now, you may never get another chance. Live, man, live. You know, Andy, I think you're right. Of course I'm right. By golly, I think I'll go down to the Emporium right now and at least take a look at it. Say, as a matter of fact, I could use a new reel, too. Wait a minute, I'll get my coat and I'll go with you. Hey, look, look out for your leg. <laughs> <laughs> but I forgot all about the darn You are getting a little too rambunctious there, boy. <laughs> well, gee, Oz, it was awful nice of you to come over. I appreciate it a million. Oh, well, swell, Andy. i tell you what I'll do when I get the reel. I'll bring it over and let you have a look at it. Oh, swell. Do that. And, uh... Oh, if you ever need anybody to come over and cheer you up a little, let me know, will you? I was just trying some of David's old coats on Ricky. New clothes are so expensive these days. Come here, dear. Try to oh. check one on again. How's Mr. Beasley? Feeling pretty low, I imagine, huh? Uh, uh no, Harriet. Uh, on the contrary, he seemed in very good spirits. Oh, well, that's good. What's in the package? Uh, oh, uh, well, I'll, uh, uh, I'll explain this to you a little later on. Uh, getting back to Andy Beasley, we had a very interesting little chat. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I discovered a facet of his personality I hadn't known before. You know, he has a very interesting, cheerful philosophy on life. In fact, he sort of cheered me up. I thought you were supposed to cheer him up. Well, yes, that was the original idea, but it sort of worked out just the opposite. Yeah, I, uh, I noticed this when I came in the door. There's an awful funny smell all through the house. Oh, that must be the cauliflower. We're having turnip greens, cauliflower, and banana squash for dinner. <laughs> But isn't that sort of a gypsy-type menu? I just thought I'd cut down on our food budget a little after our conversation this morning. Oh, that... <laughs> oh, you don't want to pay any attention to what I say. I, I mean, uh, you don't want to take those things too seriously. There's a happy medium, you know. Oh, from the way you talked, I thought you wanted us to cut down to everything except bare essentials. Oh, well, yeah, I can see where you'd infer that from what I said. I don't mean to sound like a straw in the wind, Harry, but I think I've been sort of convinced by Andy Beasley's philosophy. Oh, in what way? Well, I don't think we ought to throw money around foolishly, but I do think there's such a thing as being too conservative and denying yourself little extravagances that are real, genuine pleasures in life. Well, yes, I suppose there is. But why don't we go out to dinner tonight? What about the vegetables? We can put them in the refrigerator. Well, yes, I suppose we can. Pa? Yeah? You think I ought to buy that Periscope? Uh, what Periscope is that? Well, you know, the boys have been saving their money, and Ricky saw a Periscope advertised that he'd like to buy. Well, if you'd like it, go ahead and buy it, son. Well, David saw a baseball he'd kind of like to have. Well, tell him to buy it after all baseball season's practically here. We have a very unusual family, don't we, Pop? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not so sure. Uh, how about you, Harriet? Well, I'm inclined to agree with Ricky. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, isn't there some little extravagance you'd like to indulge yourself in? Well... Go ahead, anything at all. Well, I did see a beautiful dress advertised at the Emporium. Well, then go ahead and buy it. Well, it's pretty expensive, even on sale. Oh, so what, Harriet? It's fun to live dangerously once in a while. <laughs> Here, here's a checkbook. Here's the pen. Have yourself a ball. <laughs> doing. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Have fun. Can I have a checkbook, too, Pop? <laughs> no, you can't have a checkbook, but I'll tell you what. Why don't you and Dave go down the Emporium with your mother, and if you see something you'd like, I'm sure she'll buy it for you. Oh, well, David does need a new pair of pants, and Ricky needs a new coat. Well, then go ahead. Buy them. Yes, well, I'm going to tell David. And be sure and buy that dress for yourself now. Oh, yes, I promise. Buy two, if you'd like. Oh, don't tempt me. <laughs> no, I mean it, Harriet. Have fun. Ozzy. Uh, yeah? Uh, not that it makes any difference, of course, but when you visited this Mr. Uh, Beasley... Oh, yes. Did he serve any liquid refreshments? <laughs> oh, come on in, Barney. All right, well, I come on in and sit down. Uh, beautiful day, isn't it? Well, the uh, paper says it's going to rain. Well, so what? It clears up the air. 
You seem disgustingly happy today. Didn't you have to pay your income tax like the rest of us? <laughs> You're darn right I did. Ah, oh, they really nicked me, too. You certainly sound cheerful about it. I've got nothing but troubles myself. Oh, uh, what seems to be the matter? This morning I discovered a slight stain in our living room ceiling. Looks like I'm due for a big plumbing job. That's really a gruesome thought. Oh, I wouldn't get upset about it. After all, it's probably just a small plumbing job. Ah, there's no such thing as a small plumbing job. Well, have you called the plumber yet? Well, frankly, I'm afraid to. We'll probably need new pipes. Or it could be leaking from the shower. Do you know how much it would cost to have new tile put in that shower? Well, Thorny, why don't you wait to find out what the trouble is first? Look, Oz, where there's a stain, there's a leak. Where there's a leak, there's something broken. Where there's something broken, there's something to be fixed. And where there's something to be fixed, there's money, and where there's money, I haven't the faintest idea. <laughs> Thorny, what you need is a new philosophy on life. Don't let these little financial troubles bother you like this. Let them take care of themselves. Believe me, you'll be a much happier man as a result. Sure. The happy hobo they'd call me down at the freight yards. <laughs> you sound like me this morning. I was going around the house saying we've got to cut down expenses here and there. I even gave Harriet a big pep talk about it. And you know who convinced me of how ridiculous I was? Ricky? <laughs> Andy Beasley. Andy Beasley? That's right. Well, he must have cracked his head in that fall, too. No. Barney, don't be ridiculous. He's absolutely right. Frankly, I'm glad I had a talk with him. Where are you going, Oz? Here, I want to show you something. Take a look at this. See how you like it. Say, this is a beautiful reel. When'd you buy it? Oh, <laughs> just a little while ago. It's really a beauty, isn't it? Sure. These things are pretty expensive, though, aren't they? Well, they aren't cheap. <laughs> I must admit, I envy you, Oz. I really wish I could be that foolish. Well, it wasn't really an extravagance. I needed a new fishing reel, Thorny. Mm-hmm. How many times did you go fishing last year? Oh, well, I, I didn't go very often last year, but I went quite a few times the year before. And one of the reasons why I didn't go so often last year is because I didn't have a nice fishing reel. I'll tell you one thing, I'm going to go plenty this summer. I bet Harriet didn't toss her hat in the air when she found out you bought this thing. Harriet? Yeah, your wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I know. Believe me, Thorny, she'll be in perfect agreement with the whole idea. You mean she doesn't know you bought it yet? Well, I, I plan to tell her. Thorny, our whole family is in agreement on things like this. Well, that's fine. It's fine. Sounds like a fool's paradise to me. I believe in saving my money. Well, uh, so do I. But I also believe in enjoying life a little bit. You can't be a pinch penny. You've got to spend a little now and then to get the most out of life. Well, I guess we each have our own ideas on this subject. I'm certainly not going to criticize you. Who am I to say that you're wrong? If you want to squander your money instead of doing the right thing, that's strictly up to you. Thorny, this fishing reel wasn't an extravagance. Besides, I can always pawn it. Yes, that's true. Not only that, I, I can catch fish for us to eat. Sure. Of course, you have to buy a rod to go with it. Well, so what? Well, I uh, guess I'll go home and call a plumber. Here, I'll take that. Okay. Well, I hope everything turns out all right for you. Thanks, Oz. Come on, pull yourself together. Stop worrying. Okay, I will, Oz. And to keep smiling, you know. I'll try. Uh, you going somewhere? Yeah, I thought I'd better take a little trip downtown. I have a little something I want to do. Better get my top coat first, fella. Darn rain. Looks like it'll be coming down any minute. Well, uh, see you later, Oz. Okay. Take care of yourself. <laughs>
packages about? The loot from our shopping tour. Oh, for goodness sake. Where do you see my new pants? Oh, I bought David a beautiful pair of gray flannels. Yeah, and I got a new sweater. Just put the packages in there on the dining room table, boy. I got a new ball and glove, too, Pop. Oh. Uh, did you get your new dress? Uh, my new dress? Yes, you know, the one that was advertised in the Emporium on sale? I changed my mind. Oh. <laughs> I kind of thought you would. I bought three others instead. <laughs> a sale on summer dresses, and I just decided to stock up. We had more fun today. Oh, good. I, I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. Let's do it again tomorrow. <laughs> no, I, I think you bought enough today to last for quite a while. Well, I thought you wanted us to go out on sort of a little splurge. Oh, yes, that was fine, and I'm glad you and the boys had such a good time. But, well, I think... Maybe it might be just as well if we don't go out to dinner tonight, Harriet. Uh, the paper says it's going to rain and, and all. Whatever you say. Yeah, we still have those vegetables, don't we? Oh, yes, they're still in the refrigerator. I can run down and get some steaks if you like. Well, uh, uh, aren't steaks awfully exp... I mean, well, uh, whatever you and the boys want. Well, I'll look in the kitchen and see what we have. Oh, uh, come in, Thorny. Hi, Oz. Oh, hi, Thorny. I've been awful big hurry, but I've got to tell you the news. Listen to this. The plumber just left, and the job that I was so worried about took him exactly five minutes. He charged me practically nothing. Oh, gee, well, that's swell, Thorny. Not only that, Oz, but I've been thinking over that philosophy of yours, and it's beginning to make a lot of sense. What am I worrying about? Life is too short. <laughs> well, see you later, Oz. Hey, yeah, uh, going to take the family to the movies. Low seats. <laughs> I almost forgot the most important news of all. I was talking to Joe Randolph. I told him how you refused to be daughtered and you went out and bought that expensive fishing reel. What expensive fishing reel? Harriet, this husband of yours is a very remarkable fellow. Oh. Joe thought so too. And he called the newspaper and they're going to send over that Dodge and his fellow to get an interview. You know the happiest man in town thing? Oh, he shouldn't have done that. Well, why not? And listen to this. They're going to give you a nice little gift. A swell bamboo pole to match your reel. <laughs> oh, gee, that, that's very nice. I knew you'd be surprised, Oz. I'll see you later. Oh, no, gee. I think I'll go out and buy myself a golf ball. You might mention that to Diogenes. Maybe he'll give me a set of clubs to go with it. <laughs> oh, Harry, this is terrible. What's the matter? Oh. I've done a very cowardly thing. I took the fishing reel back to the Emporium. Well, why'd you do that? Well, I got to thinking about it, and I got to worrying, and I figured it was too extravagant, so I chickened out and, and changed my mind. I just don't have your courage, Harriet. Oh, believe me, the pleasure was all mine. This is going to be very embarrassing for all of us. This newspaper man, Diogenes, coming over here. Well, I'll... Just have to tell him that I backed out. Nonsense. You can show him this one. <laughs> Harriet, my reel. Where did you get that? At the Emporium. I decided since you could be so generous with your money, I could be generous with your money, too. <laughs> Harriet, you're wonderful. Oh, I don't mess around, boy. <laughs> Hi, boy. <laughs> Having any luck? Yeah. <laughs> How was the interview? Oh, swell. Let's take a look at this rod and reel. Aren't they beauties, though? Yeah, that's a beautiful set. Imagine that's what you came over to see. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> oh, by the way, did Andy Beasley call you? No, not while I was home. Why was he going to? Well, he'll probably call you a little later. I was just talking to him on the phone. He wanted your number. Oh, he's a real great guy. Did he give you a touch of his carefree philosophy? <laughs> yes, I think you might call it that. Oh? I wonder what he wanted to talk to me about. Did he say? Yeah? Yeah, he did. He wants you and me to be co-signers on a note of his over at the bank. 